One of the most famous Christmas TV classics is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. In it, Hermie the Elf that really wants is there, there's Hermie the Elf that really wants to be a dentist, and Yukon Cornelius, a prospector that can't find silver or gold. And of course, there's Rudolph himself with his strange, glowing red nose. I think about misfits like these when I recall a conversation I had with Dr. Maggie Hawk when she was here a few years ago. She taught me that the greatest human need is not to be loved, but to belong. The, the idea that we all need and want to belong The idea that we all need and want to belong is why the story of Rudolph touches us, I think. We all feel like misfits sometimes. But as Christians, we have the perfect answer to being, to having the feeling that we're misfits. As Christians, we can find and have the feeling that we belong. Sure, we can get that feeling from joining groups and clubs and societies, but we truly experience true belonging when we realize we are members of the body of Christ. So when we look at the icons of saints, we will be looking at misfits. These are people that have odd, strange, fantastic misfit stories. These are people that, if it were not for Jesus, they would not have, have a home or a community or a place to belong. But the flip side of it is that they do have community because they have Jesus. And because they do have Jesus and real community, they have real communion. What is the answer to being a misfit? What's the solution? The answer is to be a fit. We can be people that fit, people that belong. We can feel that we belong, and we can have that belonging feeling when we get to know some of the stories of these people their stories can help us to feel like we belong, and their stories teach us that without Christ, the saints and all of us would be misfits too. A perfect example of being a misfit is Saint Sin, the one just to the left of the cross on the top, and that's who we're talking about today. Saint Xenia was a beautiful young Russian girl from the city of St. Petersburg. When she was just old enough, Xenia married a dashing imperial officer named Andre, and they, they were both very happy together. Because they were young, they loved going to balls and dinners, but one night at a party, young Andre suddenly fell over dead. This was terrible for Xenia. Andre had not even had time to go to confession or to receive communion before he died and she was dreadfully worried about his soul. After Andre was buried, Sanya left St. Petersburg for some long time. When she returned, she gave away everything she had, her house, her money, and her beautiful clothes. Instead of her own things, she wore Andre's old army jacket. If you look, you can see her wearing it. She wore Andre's old army jacket and told everyone to call her by his name. She went all over the city doing good for people in his name, so that if his soul was suffering from unrepentant sins, her deeds and prayers might help him. These deeds of almsgiving were unique and special because it's not so common that a person gives up their whole life for another person as Sandy did. But there's an interesting thing about doing good deeds and offering prayers for other people. <coughs> and St. Senya experienced this, it is that she became very close to God herself. She was praying so hard for her husband that she was the one who became holy. Many people thought that she was a little crazy, especially when she gave all her money away. In fact, some of her relatives even took her to court for this. And in, our, in the church, we have a special name for holy people that other people think might be crazy. We call them fools for Christ. They often aren't crazy, but just pretend to be 
so that they can hide their spiritual gifts. Sandia was an example of this. She had many spiritual gifts. She began to do odd things, like walking barefoot in the snow and wearing unusual clothes so that people wouldn't think she was special. Sometimes she knew what was going to happen even before it happened. Sometimes if people had problems and didn't know what God wanted them to do, she could tell them. And often, just by looking at people, she knew if they were telling the truth or not. Christians like St. Samuel often do good things in secret so that only God sees. This is because they follow Jesus' own words when he said, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And this is what our icon of St. Samuel is about. If you notice, she's holding something. She's holding a brick. Why is she holding a brick? Well, years ago, when the people of St. Petersburg were building a church, Sanya used to go at night to the sea and carry the heavy bricks that were needed for the next day's work. She carried the bricks to the top of the church. When the workmen came every morning, they found the hardest part of their work already finished, and they often wondered who was doing such a kind of act. Finally, one night, two of the workmen decided to wait in the dark. Senya appeared. All night long, they watched her climb up and down, up and down the walls of the half-finished church with her heavy bricks. The tur this church that St. Senya helped to build was still there, and there's a tiny chapel there now beside where she is buried. Pilgrims from all over Russia still come there to pray for help. During the communist years, when the churches were closed, closed, pilgrims came secretly to St. Samuel's grave. The door of the chapel was locked, and because they couldn't get in, they wrote their prayers to her on little scraps of paper and slipped them into the cracks in the walls. The communists didn't like this one bit, but they soon found out that it was impossible to stop Christians from loving St. Samuel. And they certainly could not stop St. Samuel from answering their prayers. Many people have been healed of illnesses and passions through St. Samuel's prayers. She also helps people to find homes and to find jobs. St. Samuel's love for people was such that she always was ready to help, and she still comes to those who, for, she still comes to help those who ask. When she was still on earth, in the day she was, in the day she would wander about the street, her face reflecting a warm, friendly glow. At night, however, in all seasons, in all weather, she would go into a field and pray with prostrations. Finally, the time came when God called Senya to rest from her struggles and took her to himself. Senya is one of those candles that God lights on earth from time to time in order to light up the path of salvation for the rest of us. As Jesus himself said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your God which is in heaven. Saint Samuel, pray to God for us.